Hey folks, and welcome back. Uh, this is lab number three. Uh, this week we are going to talk about collections, and specifically we're going to talk about lists, which is something very similar to an array, but it can grow and shrink in C Sharp. Um, we're going to look at lists in general, and then we're going to look at how we would make a object um, that we can put inside the list so that we have a list of objects. All right, so we're going to start off over in Visual Studio with our usual defaults. Uh, I've created a new um, project. And what I want to do here is I'm going to do, go ahead and define a list. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a list of integers. This is very similar to an array of integers, but the cool part is that a list can grow and shrink as needed. So I'm going to say list int, and I'm going to say my list equals new list int. Now you'll notice that as I typed all of that, it's underlining some of it. And the reason it's underlining is it because it says the name, the type or namespace list could not be found. Are you missing a using directive? And that's exactly what's wrong. Anytime that you're going to use a list, you have to say at the top of the code using system collections generic. And there's a nice thing about Visual Studio, which is it says for potential fixes, press Alt Enter. So with my mouse still over that red line, I'm going to hit Alt Enter. And when I do that, you'll see that it pops up and says using system collection generic. And if I just click that, you'll see at the very top it added that in, and now the error went away. So even if you can't remember how you import a list, you can just type it in and then Alt Enter and it will fill it in for you. Cool. So I now have a uh, list, which I've called my list, and I'd like to be able to put some stuff in there. So I'm going to say my list dot add, and I'm going to put in the number seven. Seems pretty easy. All right, so that's very similar to what we do with an array. I would have said, the array at position zero in square brackets is equal to seven, but here I'm just able to use add. I don't have to keep track of what cell I'm putting them in. So likewise, my list dot add, and I'm going to put in the number blah, 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 and then I'm going to say my list dot add, oops, and I'm going to put in the number 100. Great. So I've put three things into the list. Woohoo! How do I get them out? How do I see what's currently in my list? Well, generally, just like with an array, you're going to use a loop to print them out. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to say for int i equals 0, i less than 3, i plus plus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out, so that's going to be with a console.write line, and I'm going to print out my list at square brackets i. So the cool thing is that when I want to access it, I access it exactly as if it was an array, which this is how you would have accessed an array at position i, you would print it out. And so if I run this guy, it's going to print the screen 7, 75, 292, and 100. And there they are up there along with my hello world because I never commented that out. It's still at the bottom. Okay, so that's how you would do a print list. So if I add in another item in here, my list.add, and we'll put in 500 into that cell, and I run this again, Am I going to see the 500? The answer is no, I'm not. Why? Because I specifically said I wanted it to show me the first three things. That's what that loop does. It goes from i equals 0 to i less than 3. That's not exactly great, really, is it? So instead of hard coding 3, I'm going to type in my list. And then when I hit dot, you see that I get this little drop down list that shows me a bunch of different options. And as usual, it guesses which one I probably meant, which is count. That's going to tell me how many items are in the list. So now when I run it, instead of it being hard-coded to three, you see that the count returned four, and so the loop will correctly print out all four. If I didn't want to be bothered with figuring all of that out, I could certainly use a for-each loop. And a for-each loop looks very works very similarly to that for loop, so I'm just going to comment all that out. And what I'm going to do down below here is I'm going to use a for-each loop. So I'm going to say for each, and then I'm going to specify the type of each cell in the array, which in this case is an int. I'm going to call it x, and I'm going to say in my list. Okay, so what a for each loop is going to do is it's going to automatically go through each cell in the array list, pull out each item one at a time, and assign it to the variable that I called x, and then it's going to run the code which is inside the curly braces. So if I do a console.writeline with x, what this is going to print out is exactly what it printed out before, which is the four numbers, 7, 75, 100, and 500, and then my hello world. But that's all coming from the for each loop. So the nice thing about the for each loop is I didn't have to worry about how many items are in the list or am I accessing the right cell. It just does it all automatically for me. It iterates through the collection, pulling the items out one at a time and giving them to me as a variable. 
and then I'm able to use that variable. So that's how you do a for loop and a for each loop, and this is basically how a list works. Now, this was a list of integers. You could certainly have a list of floats and doubles and even booleans, I guess, but that would be kind of weird. You could have a list of strings, but what happens if you want to have more than one thing in the list, in each cell of the list? So for example, if I wanted to keep track of information about a student, I might want to have all kinds of information about that student all stored together in a list. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say that I want a, to add a class and I'm going to add a class called student.cs. All right, so we're going to make an array, a list of students. So each student is going to have, let's say, a, I'm going to make this public, which is not great. I really should be making a private, put getters and setters in there, but just to make things easier for the example, making a public string name, and then I'm going to have a public int ksu id, and then I'm going to have a public string major. All right, and I'm going to give myself a constructor. So that's going to be public student, which is going to take in a string, new name. It's going to take in an int, new KSU ID. It's all capitalized now for some reason, and a new string called new major. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set each of those. So name equals new name, and uh, KSU ID equals new KSU ID, and major equals new major. All right, so that gave me a constructor. So I have basically a set of attributes that are inside of a class called student, and I have a constructor that allows me to do it. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a way to print out a student. So I'm going to do an override of two string. So that's going to be public vo um, oops, override string two string. And again, when I hit tab, it went ahead and filled in some information for me. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print out student and then plus name is major plus major and has su id plus ksu id okay so again the two string anytime that you use the object as if it is a string two string is automatically called and it will return this instead of just returning the name of the class all right, so back over in my main program here, I'm just going to erase all of this because that's what I had done a few moments ago. And I'm going to go ahead and make myself an, a, a list of type student. So instead of int, I'm now putting student in here. And that's going to be my students is equal to new list of students. And, all right, don't forget those parentheses at the end. They're necessary every time you create an, a list. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now I'm going to make a student. So I'm going to say student. We'll call it student1 is equal to a new student. And I'm going to use that handy dandy constructor, which takes in three parameters. The first one is the name. So this is going to be Jane. And Jane's KSU ID is 12345. And Jane is a CS major. All right, I'm going to make a second student. And this one is going to be Paula. And the ID number is going to be, oh, let's say, 89765, whatever. And Paula is going to be an SWA major. All right. And so now I'm going to put those two into the array list. So I'm going to say my students dot add, and I'm going to add student one. Then I'm going to say my students dot add student two. Cool. And I'm going to print them out. So I'm going to do, again, the for each loop. So I'm going to say for each student x in my students. I'm just going to print them. System, uh, good luck. Console dot right line x. And again, x is a terrible variable name. And don't be like me, kids. Use good variable names. But this will work. I'm going to get rid of that because we don't want to say hello world. And I'm going to hit run. And what we're going to see is it creates two students, it puts them into the array list, and then it allows me to print them out. The final thought that I'm going to say is if I had wanted to access one particular student's information and change it, let's say I need to update Paula's KSU ID to 100, the way that I would do that is I would say my students, this is the array list name, at position 1, because that is the position where Paula is located, dot KSU ID is equal to 100. And that allows me to access 
This is a variable name. It happens to be position one of, an, of a list, but I'm accessing the KSUID attribute inside of that cell and setting it equal to 100. And now when I print this, you're going to see that, um, blah, 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 what have I done? There's an exception. Index was out of range. Um, my students, I put two things in there. That index is not out of range. I don't know what it's talking about. You're being crazy. Um, less than the size of the index was at a range, less than the size of the collection. My students, is that not what I called it? My students, position one dot KSUID equals 100. Okay, well, that's weird. Hold on one second. Okay, well, it would have helped if I had tried to do that after I had put the students into the array list, or sorry, into the list. So I'm going to move that line down below the add, and then we're going to try this again. And there we go, Paula's KSUID is now 100. Okay, um, so yes, you obviously cannot access cell one before there's nothing in the array list, and there was nothing in the array list. I had created the students, but I had not added them to the array list. So that's why I was getting that error. Okay, so that's the uh, lab for today. That's very similar to what you're going to be doing. You're going to need to make a list of objects and you're going to need to be able to manipulate some of the items inside of that list. So good luck. Make sure you get your assignment and your lab turned in. And if you have any questions, talk to your GTA and I'll see you next week.